When we're journaling for growth, we need things that challenge us and Flip the Book can do that. And what it will do is provide you with a prompt that you can use for journaling, conversation starters, or as a point of contemplation. And what you can express is how do you respond to the paragraph that's read out? What stands out for you? How does it make you feel? Did you agree or disagree with the guest? What part of the conversation did you really feel was speaking to you? All these can be journal prompts that you can use to challenge yourself to go just that little bit deeper and be a little bit more honestly self-reflective and explore how you feel, what you think and what you internally already know but didn't know you knew. I think it's time to play Flip the Book. So would you like book one, two or three? Two. Two. Okay, so that is actually... Breaking Free from the Chains of Silence. It's a book written for um, childhood abuse victims, but at the back of the book there's a section that tells you a little bit about your soul, like the essence of your soul. So could you give me a number between 189 and 215? 211. And you have five paragraphs to pick from. Second. Okay, so this comes under the heading Serenity. Serenity is felt by unconditionally loving, true source, divine origin, consciousness. So where we come from, whatever label you want to put on that. So our origins and your soul. So serenity is felt while unconditionally loving your own origins and your soul. It is to be internally joyous and respectful of your own clarity and to magnetize sorry, and to magnetise your significance. So I keep going to magnetise, which I think it, um, is not the word that's there, but it's kind of I'm stuck on it, so I'm going to go with it. I think what you're doing with your videos is you're, you're letting us all know how significant we are and that, 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 that and then we, we need to be reminded of that. Yeah, as long as we do not think it the ego way says, I am very special, as long as we don't go in that direction, that I'm more special than you. Yes. We are important. Yes, we are important. We are a child of God, which is a divine creation. Yeah. And as we said, as we, and I think I would like to do rather the word respecting, self respecting. Self respecting. Self respecting it and do not hurt ourselves, which means negative thoughts and, and, and negative food and uh, negative spending time, etc. As uh, we do this out of self respect, we do not do this or we are careful of doing this. So, self respecting. There is a, the one thing which came to my, my mind sometimes, uh, my, uh, Gabriele has said that sometimes it's the opposite as well when we are so sitting in the group and so on. And, uh, everything goes on and so, etc and we are all sort of charged by other energies and so on sometimes it just helps it says i'm not important just to say i am not important now this does not mean that we are not important in the eyes of god but in this circle of the world which is not the earth but the world energy just take our ego back i am not important once we can do this there is so much freedom in these words i am not important it really doesn't matter what I think, what I say, how, whether anybody listens to me, whether anybody, etc. I am not important. Let the world go on as it pleases. I go my way. But the moment I think I'm important and I have to share this and I have to do this, etc., I'm already in my ego trap. So sometimes it helps to say to ourselves, I am not important. It's not to put us down and we are not, we are less than anybody else. It's just only, I don't have to compete with anybody else. Yeah, it's definitely in the exploration in in the explanation of what you're saying there, because I think you know because I deal with a lot of people's unresolved emotions, like when their clientele, you know, they they're coming in the door with this feeling of not good enough, unworthy, and and I spend a lot of time to remind them if you are born, you are significant, and yeah. that we're an all unique, and there's an equality to all souls, regardless of what experience we're having, because it's only just different experiences we're having, whether you're a CEO of a multimillionaire 
um, or a, a head of a country, it's just that's just an experience. You and I, there's an equality in our souls. So, you know, it's 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 recognizing the equality of all souls, and you can't recognize the true value of your own significance if you're not recognizing the significance of everybody. And I think right. we're saying the same things, but just in a different way of yeah. explaining it. So, and and I think that um, when when we are looking at serenity, that means that the, the systems that we're in are all working in harmony. And if 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 our, within ourselves we're working in harmony with our soul, you feel an inner serenity. And it says here, serenity invokes a level headedness, which is important for the resolution of whatever is shackling you to the chains of oppression, so suffering, that causes you to panic and exist in an anxious state. Serenity creates an intent to be present while valuing the truth of your soul and the significance of being a friend to yourself. So that self-compassion and nurturing your way through whatever your resolutionary path is, whatever it is you do have to, you know, lean into and have a look at. Yeah, very true. I like that. Well, the other two things which would come to mind to achieve serenity, of course, is at least to learn to meditate. I mean, that's very helpful to get into the stage of meditation, of calming one's mind, the monkey mind. And the other thing is also to step away from the tapestry of life and see it, the whole thing from a, from a very big picture, wherever mm -hmm. we are and whatever. When we suddenly see the big bird eye view, and see how everything connects and how, how we are sort of, uh, uh, how everything makes sense. I, I have a wonderful story. Uh, and a doctor said that, uh, told me that she was, uh, one time she was um, in, 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 sort of, she was, I think she was in, in, uh, working in a hospice and she took a rest and she was closing her eyes and suddenly she was in a different state of mind and she saw this enormous room where the ceiling was, lots of pictures and all these pictures of her own life. There were scenes from her own life uh, uh, painted on the ceiling and in the center of the room, there was this angelic being. And she looked up and says, oh my God, now I see everything makes sense. Everything fits together like a big puzzle. She said, and if I only had known this, I wouldn't have been so worried and fretting all the time. And then the spirit being put the finger on her mouth and says, even that worrying was part of the perfection. Mm. So I love this story. So wherever we are, sometimes we see the big picture and see it all makes sense in a way. And uh, even if it doesn't make sense at the moment, but it, there, is, there is an overrunning sense of everything. And we have created it for ourselves to become free again. We are just facing ourselves and everything is here to bring us home. Everything, even the most horrific situation, the most difficult person, whatever happens in our life is here to bring us home. Everything happens for us and not to us. Oh, that's a lovely statement. Well, thank you, Hans. I've really enjoyed the conversation. It was a pleasure, Aurelien. I loved meeting you and to hear your thoughts. And I, I think it was just, it was just wonderful. I learned a lot. Thank you so much.